Hi everybody, Will Martin. So staying on the same path uh, that I was on with the last video with Dr. Robert Redfield, I'm going to share a video from the House Select Subcommittee on the coronavirus pandemic. And um, I'd like to hear what your thoughts are on this. So let me share this with you now. I now recognize Ms. Maliotakis from New York for five minutes of questioning. Thank you, Chairman. For two years, myself and the other Republicans on this subcommittee connected the dots. We exposed the evidence supporting our strong belief that COVID was developed and leaked from the Wuhan lab. And during those same two years, the same Democrats that sit on this committee, they only hindered, they obstructed, they refused to hold hearings and get to the truth. Now we see mounting evidence supporting the COVID-19 originated from the lab in Wuhan, China, run by the Communist Chinese uh, Party. And this hearing is about getting to the truth. I thank the chairman for making this the very first hearing because the American people who have seen just as many fellow Americans die from COVID, as nearly as many die from COVID, that died in every war since the American Revolution combined, deserve to know the truth. Uh, Dr. Redfield, you pointed to the lab leak theory even before we did. In mid-January of 2020, you expressed concerns to Dr. Fauci, to uh, Jeremy Farrer of UK's Wellcome Trust, and to Dr. Tedros of World Health Organization that, quote, we had to take the lab leak hypothesis with extreme seriousness. And you urged Dr. Fauci to investigate both the lab and the natural hypotheses. Shortly thereafter, on February 1st, uh, Farrer convened a meeting of a group of 11 top scientists across five time zones and asked Dr. Fauci to join, and he wrote, quote, my preference is to keep this group really tight. Obviously, ask everyone to treat in total confidence, unquote. Dr. Redfield, you were excluded from this call, but up until then, you had been on every single, you were included in every other conversation. What changed? Why do you think that you were excluded from these conversations? Thank you very much. I think uh, just to emphasize, uh, in, in, in early to mid-January, I did have multiple calls with Fauci, Farrar, and, and, and Tedros about how important I thought it was that science get engaged in, in aggressive, aggressively pursuing both hypotheses. I also expressed, as a clinical virologist, that I felt it was um, not scientifically plausible that this virus went from a bat to humans and became one of the most infectious viruses that we have for humans. All viruses are not the same. So when you look at coronaviruses with, for SARS and MERS, for example, when they entered the human species, which they did via an intermediate, they never learned how to go human to human. Even to this day, they don't know how to go human to human. So you can't equate Ebola with a coronavirus. Now, why do, you, why do you think you were excluded from those calls? I, I, because it was, it was told to me that uh, they wanted a single narrative and that I obviously had a different point of view. Okay. In emails following the conference call, four of the 11 scientists told Fauci that they all found the genetic sequence inconsistent with expectations from evolutionary theory, basically what you're saying. However, just three days later, these four scientists had drafted a paper arguing the exact opposite, and that's now the infamous proximal origin of SARS-CoV-2. Our investigations show that this paper was prompted by Dr. Fauci, among others, with a goal to disprove the lab leak theory. What is the likelihood that these scientists came across additional information just three days after making these statements to conclude with such certainty that COVID-19 came from nature instead of the lab leak that they thought it was three days earlier? Yeah, I think it's unfortunate. Again, I've said this before, that this whole approach that was taken on, January, on February 1st and subsequently in the month of February, if you really want to be truthful, it's antithetical to science. Thank you. Science has debate, and they squashed any debate. Thank you. Given what we know now and looking at all the conversations in February of 2020 and before the release of the paper, do you think that uh, Dr. Fauci used this paper to hide the gain-of-function research created, the gain-of-function research created this virus? I can't talk about Fauci's motivation. Do you think that the paper does hide the truth? 
I think it's an inaccurate paper that basically was part of a narrative that they were creating. Remember, this pandemic did not start in January at the seafood market. We now know there was infections all the way back into September. This was a narrative that was decided that they were gonna say this came from the wet market and they were gonna do everything they could to support it to negate any discussion about the possibility that this came from a laboratory. I got 20 seconds left. Dr. Fauci was affirmatively told in, told in an email that uh, NIAID had a monetary relationship with the Wuhan uh, Institute through uh, EcoHealth Alliance. He, he was told this in January 27th of 2020. Do you think that Dr. Fauci intentionally lied under oath to Senator Paul when he vehemently denied NIH's funding of gain-of-function research? I think there's no doubt that NIH was funding gain-of-function research. Is it likely that American tax dollars funded the gain-of-function research that created this virus? I think it did, not only from NIH, but from the State Department, USAID, and from DOD. I'm out of time. Thank you very much. Just amazing stuff that is going on that, you know, we uh, we don't know about. And I, I've said this before, but I grew up in a time where I believed everything that I was told. I believed what the government said. I believed what public health officials said. I believed what my teachers said. And now you have to question everything because people have motivations. We can't necessarily understand what those motivations are or why they would necessarily be opposite of common sense. But I think even for me at the very beginning of the pandemic, it was all happening too fast. And yet you wanted to believe you wanted to do the right thing. And so I was the in the first group to get the vaccine in uh, December of 2020. And now, you know, would I get the vaccine now? Well, it's, a, it's a great question. Uh, but it's one that we need to debate. It's one that we need to talk about. That's how science works. We talk about it. We debate it. We don't necessarily all agree, but we come to consensus after we've had that robust debate, which never occurred. Thanks for watching.